So, welcome back to my channel, Blessed and Highly Flavored. I feel like, well, I know it's been a couple of days since I've sat down and actually produced a video. So, how are you? How are you doing? Um, did you miss me? It's been about, I don't know, five, six days since I produced a video. My last video was when I um, got a chance to post episode three as well as posting episode 10. Uh, but anyway, I'm back and I am ready to prepare something that is savory, um, delicious. It's like a comfort food. So today I'm going to do hamburger steak and homemade garlic mashed potatoes, of course. So steak, well, hamburger steak, gravy, mashed potatoes, they all seem to mesh well together. So that's what I'll be preparing today. So yay. Um, but I'm kind of just trying to get my mind wrapped around it. I'm getting a really late start today. I know I say that often, but like it's eight o'clock at night. So it's gonna be a fun night. But we're gonna make hamburger steak, mashed potatoes with the gravy. It's gonna be amazing and comforting and just delicious. So, before I jump into this video, like I said, it's been a minute, so I wanna know how you're doing. So comment below how you've been doing the past couple of weeks or so. Let me know how your jobs are deciding to um, transition from um, stay at home to safe at home. Because if you're here in Alabama, that's what we have been um transition to safe at home which basically means um more businesses are opening up but everything's not back open there's still a limit on um how many people can be in the space as well as the six feet apart for the social distancing as well as they still want us to wear our mask but, so i do um, feel like it is very imperative that we continue to protect ourselves and also protecting each other so i hope you're doing that um, one more thing I want to add before jumping into this video, because you know me, I go on and on and on, but I'm not going to do that today. But I did want to say, with all these recipes, I'm not saying that my way is the right way. I'm not saying that your way is the wrong way. So, if there's a recipe that you see that you feel like I could tweak or add something to it, if you have recommendations, or just some things that you want me to try, please, please, please feel free to comment below. And I'll be sure to try to and at least consider your opinion. Because I just love opinions. <laughs> anyway, without any other further ado, because I'm not going to continue to talk your ear off. But I do want you to subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, click the like button. And you know, don't be stingy, share. So, with all of that being said, let's make this video. So, I promise I'm going to start this video. But before I do, I had to stop and thank a couple of people. So, first I want to thank Ebony at Finger Paints Nail Studio for hooking me back up. Because, girl, I love my new set. So, thank you so much for that. Um, she does a really great job, like I said, in a very um, clean environment. So, I love, love, love that. She gets you in and out. She's very professional, and my nail shape and color and everything is always amazing. So I had to tell her thank you yet again. Thank you, Ebony. Also, I have four sisters. I have three biological sisters, one god sister. I appreciate them all, but today I want to especially thank two of my sisters for really supporting me and sending me all kinds of lovely goodies. So um, I received this. Butcher, butcher block, which I love that I'll probably never ever cut on, but I love it and I really do appreciate it because of course it says blessed and highly flavored along with the butcher block. I also received a new swag, honey. Look at that. So I have a new apron, which I'm super excited about because it's blacked out and it's gorgeous. And of course it says blessed and highly flavored. Um but i'm sorry it's so cute but also my other sister sent me plates and bowls that you see me utilize in the pictures now for all of my videos and pictures so i really do appreciate that and i did not want to continue this video without telling these people thank you because i really do appreciate the love and support and i hope oh it has pockets 
Yay. Anyway, it has two pockets. I love it. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm going on and on and on again. Let's start the video. All right. So let's start adding the ingredients that we need. First, I'm just going to season my ground beef. It's about a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using Himalayan salt, so it sounds like a lot because I'm cranking it, but it isn't. Half a, a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of salt. I would probably start off with a quarter, just to be on the safe side. And then, of course, I'm going to add some ground black pepper, so I'm going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of that as well. And then, here's the interesting thing. So, of course, you're going to need some type of breadcrumb. I'm using a third of a cup of panko Japanese breadcrumbs, two tablespoons, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of ketchup. Please don't put two tablespoons. I mean, unless you really like ketchup, but two teaspoons. Ketchup, one teaspoon of mustard. Make sure you get it all in there. That's what the special was supposed to help me do, right? Um... And then a teaspoon of Worcestershire, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and then you're just gonna simply mix it in, which means I get to get my hands dirty. Yay, couldn't find a pair of gloves today. So, so here I have my ground beef all mixed up. I couldn't commit to using my hands, so I did work it in with my spatula. Kind of just folded all the ingredients in like so. But before we patty out our hamburger steak, I do want to caramelize some onions. So I put about a teaspoon of olive oil into my jumbo cooker. I'm going to turn it over a medium to medium high heat. I just simply slice my onion, thinly slice my onion, add into the pan. Like I said, I just want to caramelize some onions so they're going to cook for about seven to eight minutes. It's about a half of a large size onion. So I'm going to allow that to go. While my onions are caramelizing, I'm going to go ahead and patty out my hamburger steak. So of course, pettying out hamburger steak is very similar to um, pettying out burgers like I showed you um, on one of these episodes, I can't remember. But, you know, it's basically the same thing as pettying out a burger. Well, it is the same thing. You would just score it like such. Eat four patties. Scoop out one of your score marks. Now this kind of depends on the size that you want your hamburger steak to be. You want it to be semi-thick, so about a quarter of an inch thick for a hamburger patty. I like to make mine kind of larger, like such. So I would probably get about four steaks out of this ground beef mixture always make sure your ends are perfect that way your burger won't fall apart and split so like i said about a quarter of an inch thick and here is one of my patties so i'm going to go ahead and patty out the rest of my steaks and then i'll start browning them once my onions are done caramelizing see now that my onions have a nice pretty caramelized color i'm going to return them back to the eye over a medium heat i'm going to add about four ounces of sliced mushrooms like i said i just simply buy the whole baby bellas that was an eight ounce container i used about half of the mushrooms sliced them myself but you can buy pre-sliced if you prefer i just prefer to have control over the thickness of my mushrooms so i prefer to slice it myself i'm going to season the mushrooms and the onions with about um, half a teaspoon, no, I'm sorry, a quarter a teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm going to allow my mushrooms to cook down just a bit. And then I'm going to remove my vegetables from the pan. And then I'm going to go ahead and start cooking my steaks for my hamburger steak. 
Now I am going to add about a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil straight to my jumbo cooker so I can go ahead and start cooking my steaks, my hamburger steaks that is. This is what my mushrooms and onions look like all caramelized. I just allowed the mushrooms just to get slightly browner and a little tender. And they'll, of course, cook down some more when I add them back to the gravy. So, I didn't want to overcook them because I like my mushrooms to be real meaty. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to turn my heat up to about a medium-high heat because I want to get uh, a nice color, a little sear or crust, as you want, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. But that's what I want on the bottom of my meat. So I'll turn my pan up to about medium-high heat with a teaspoon of olive oil. And I'm going to attempt to cook all four. So I have four patties here. I'm going to attempt to cook four. I may have to allow these three to kind of cook down before I can add the fourth one. So I'm just going to start off with these three. I'm going to allow it to cook for about seven minutes on each side for seven minutes turn it over another seven minutes and then we'll go on with making our gravy all right my burgers have cooked for about seven minutes on that side i'm going to give them a nice turn i'm also keeping up a lot of noise so i'm going to turn down my piece of pork but I really want you to see the nice little crust and color that the burgers got. I'm going to allow them to go for another 7 to 8 minutes on this side. And I'm also going to add that red burger patty right into there because we need all four. And then we'll start making our gravy after we make our potato. So back in the back, I have my Dutch oven filled with about three quarters of way of water. Just brought that water to a boil. I'm going to season it with about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of salt. I know it seems like a lot, but like I said in previous videos, you must season your water when you're boiling things because the water isn't seasoned and you want to go ahead and give a jump start on seasoning your potatoes, especially because potatoes require a lot of seasoning, not necessarily salt, but definitely a lot of seasoning. So here I have three pounds of You Can Go potatoes. If these pieces are too large for you or you have some large potatoes, feel free to cut them into smaller pieces, medium cubes or whatever. But I'm just going to drop three pounds of these You Can Go's right into my pot. I'm going to allow it to come back to a boil. And then I'm going to boil my potatoes until they are tender so I can make my mashed potatoes. So while I'm cooking up my last patty back here in the back, I pull the other three out. I'm going to get ready to prepare, pull this one out. Like I said, they cooked about seven to eight minutes on each side. Um, internal tip should be around 165 degrees. But while that is going, I did want to tell you something that is helpful. Another little quick tip for my non meat eaters who love hamburger steak or used to love hamburger steak or were looking for a good recipe for hamburger steak. Um, I purchased the Light Life brand of plant based burgers and I seasoned them up. I don't deconstruct them and add the breadcrumbs and all of the ingredients into them because they're already padded out. But I do season them up with a little salt, a little pepper, um, garlic powder, onion powder, and then I put them in the pan. I sear both sides, so allow both sides to cook, and saute me some, or caramelize, saute, whatever. Need some onions and mushrooms like I did for this exact same recipe. Remove my patties. And then for my gravy, sometimes I go homemade, sometimes I go store-bought. Um, tonight I did store-bought, which means I just bought a pack of brown gravy, made it per the instructions, but added a little more water to it because I like to season and kind of spruce it up a bit. Returned my 
plant-based patties back into the pan with my onions and my mushrooms and pour the gravy all on top and then I split it into my oven on keep warm for 150 on oh no, like 150 degrees um just so it can kind of hang out for 20 30 minutes while I prepare this hamburger steak so I just want to jump in give you a quick tip kind of a long tip but it's for my non meat eaters you can enjoy hamburger steak too now I want to start making my gravy so I did remove most of the cooking grease um that cooked off the steaks I did remove all of that from the pan because I kind of want to have control over how much grease I'm adding back so I poured it out and I'm going to add about three we'll do four yeah I want to make sure that's four we'll do four tablespoons of the grease that just cooked off our hamburger steak. So like I said, I just removed some out and now I'm returning four tablespoons of it right back to the pan. With a few pan droppings, drippings at the bottom, that's going to be great for bringing this gravy together, especially because we're using something that's so non-stick. I also have here four tablespoons of flour. I kind of just want to get that mixed in with the oil that cooked off or the grease that cooked off our steak. So I'm getting that mixed in. I'm, allow I'm allowing my flour to kind of cook um, because flour is raw so you would want it to cook depending on how dark you want your gravy to be. Um, that should gauge how long you allow your flour and grease mixture to kind of just hang out in the pan. But you want to make sure you're whisking it, therefore you won't have any lumps. So, nice little whisk. I'm going to allow it to cook for just a moment longer. So here we have it. It's basically like a roux. I allowed it to cook for about three additional minutes before I'm going to add my beef stock or beef broth. I have a cup of that. Just slowly incorporate that right into the pan. As you can see, it's already starting to thicken up. Alexa, stop. As you can see, the gravy is already beginning to stick it. So I'm going to turn this down to a low. I'm going to add a teaspoon of ketchup and I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire. Give it a whisk. Now from here I would decide if my gravy is too thick I would thin it out with a little more beef broth or water. If you add water, then you're gonna need a little more salt and pepper. I would recommend using ground pepper, but if you don't have, I'm sorry, I would recommend using fresh ground pepper, but if you don't have that, you can add regular pepper and salt, definitely to taste. So I'm just gonna take a little additional beef broth just to thin out my gravy some more. Now I have a half a cup more of beef broth. I'm going to just add it directly to my gravy. Give it a nice little mix. You can see now it's kind of starting to thin out. More of a gravy-like consistency. Now into that, I'm going to add back my vegetables, my onions that I caramelized, and my mushrooms that I just cooked down just enough and right to the gravy. Now, I want to season my gravy. So, I'm definitely gonna use a little salt and fresh ground pepper. For my fresh ground pepper, like I said, it's a taste. I like a lot of fresh ground pepper. I'm sure you picked up on that by now. So, I'm gonna add a nice amount of fresh ground pepper. Like I said, if you don't have that, you can use regular ground pepper. That's perfectly fine. 
but I love the flavor of the fresh ground black pepper. Um, while I add freshly ground black pepper, I also want to add a little salt. So I'm going to grab my salt from over here because I left it. Add some salt. Also, to taste, so I'll start off with about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Mix everything in. And then I would, of course, taste my gravy. And then I would flavor it or season it accordingly. So here's where I choose to step a little outside the box when it comes down to seasoning my gravy. I have a little Creole seasoning here. I have a teaspoon of that. I don't like to use too much salt per se, but you know, to each his own, you can use seasoning salt if you like. I'm just gonna do a little Creole. Like I said, it is to taste right now. Your gravy doesn't taste like anything but pan drippings and cooked flour. So you wanna add all the flavor that you need. Please be sure, see my face? Please be sure to taste your gravy and add your seasonings according to your taste, please. Because you don't want plain, bland gravy with your mashed potatoes. So I'm just gonna season this, keep tweaking with it, a little salt, a little pepper, a little Creole, and then um, once it's to my liking, I'm gonna add my hamburgers right back in. I just covered my hamburger steaks with the lid that goes to my jumbo cooker. I have it on about a medium low heat now. I'm just gonna allow it to simmer and hang out for a moment while I make my mashed potatoes. These are, this here is three pounds of boiled potatoes. You can go, they are tender. As you can see, they're also hard, but they're tender. So I'm just gonna simply use my hand mixer um, to kind of smash it up. If you have a potato smasher, I would definitely recommend using that. Or you can use the hand mixer or you can use a fork, whatever you see comfortable. But to keep down on noise, I am going to go ahead and pause this video and smash my potato. As you can see here, I've kind of smashed up my You Can Go potatoes so I'm a little comfortable with the sizes. I'm gonna add two ounces of cream cheese. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of garlic powder. I know, but they're garlic mashed potatoes. I'm gonna add uh, two teaspoons of salt. I know it seems like a lot, but potatoes require a lot of seasoning and salt. I have a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And then I'm gonna take about a half a stick of unsalted butter, so about four tablespoons. I'm gonna kinda of just fold that in, like so. And then I'm going to add my heavy whipping cream. Here I have a half of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Now I am prepared to turn my hand mixer back on and get all of those flavors mixed in. So, one moment. Here are mashed potatoes after I mix everything in, just using my hand mixer. If you are ready to serve your potatoes, you can go ahead and serve them, but I wanna keep mine warm, so I'm going to return them to the pot. Yes, I do just choose to blend or mash my potato, potatoes, smash my potatoes with the skin on. I boil them with the skin on, I smash them all together. I enjoy the skin in my creamy garlic mashed potatoes, so I leave it on. I'm gonna return it back to my pot. To kind of keep it loose, I'm gonna add about two ounces of heavy whipping cream or sour cream. I think I'm gonna go with uh, two ounces of sour cream into the pot, just keep everything nice and creamy until we're ready to plate our hamburger steak. So as I mentioned, I'm wanted to keep my potatoes warm, so I just return them back to the pot that I originally boiled my potatoes in. I'm gonna add about two ounces of sour cream and give it a nice little mix to make our mashed potatoes even more creamy. I have them over a medium low heat and I'm just gonna put a top on them loosely because I don't want any condensation to really create 
A little condensation won't help hurt anything because it'll just loosen up your mashed potatoes, but too much condensation will kill it and they'll be like box potatoes. So you don't want to do that, but you definitely want to get that sour cream mixed in like so. Ooh, you know what I just thought about? And Parmesan cheese, but I'm not going to do it this time. But I am going to mix in my sour cream. Add my lid just loosely. See where I left a little gap there? That's how I want it to be. Medium low heat to keep my potatoes warm. Our hamburger steak has been hanging out, swimming around in this delicious gravy that we made for about 15 minutes over uh, a medium low heat. And then I just kind of clicked it down to low because I don't want it to burn or stick. I don't want any of my gravy to evaporate. But look at that. So it's been there about 15 minutes. It's nice and tender. Um, you can allow it to cook longer. You could also put this in your slow cooker if you like and allow it to cook for a couple hours. It'll just get more tender and more better with time, of course. But as of right now, I think our hamburger steak is perfect and it is ready to plate with our creamy garlic mashed potatoes. Check that out. Before I plate my hamburger steak, I just wanted to show you the other pan I had going. This is with the plant-based uh, burgers, the steaks. Like I said, I just seasoned them up. Onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Cooked them according to the directions. Made a pack of gravy um, and sauteed some mushrooms and some onions and added it right into there. So I wanted to show you that just in case I forget to post a picture of it plated uh, but I did want to tell you that if you are interested in making a plant-based version and I went a little too fast in the directions um, comment below and I'll be sure to give you a more detailed explanation on how you can make that but it's very simple you could make hamburger um, homemade gravy for that as well but since the plant-based patties don't really create any oil or grease or fat that's cooking off you would have to start with the butter base of course you would do four tablespoons of butter four tablespoons of flour cook it up like we did where the flour cooks it kind of browns and then from there you would add vegetable stock a cup cup and half of vegetable stock cook it until the gravy starts to boil and then season it accordingly that's an alternative to using a pack of gravy mix you can make it from scratch for plant-based uh, hamburger steak so and here you have it hamburger steak creamy garlic mashed potatoes plated up all pretty of course I had to garnish it with some parsley so I did that this is going to be such a hit so delicious so comforting with the caramelized onions and the sauteed mushroom it just adds an extra flavor profile that I'm sure you will enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me today on Blessed and Highly Flavored. Like I said, I will be sure to include a detailed recipe on how you can recreate this with uh, plant-based burger patties. Also, how you can make a homemade gravy for the plant-based bur burger patties if you don't want to use the store-bought packet. So I'll be sure to include that down below as well as the recipe for this hamburger steak that was made with ground beef. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I got a late start. It's a late night. I'm having extra late dinner, but I'm totally fine with that. Um, I'm considering serving these with some yeast rolls. I don't need the bread, but I am considering. Yeah, I'm definitely considering adding bread, but you don't have to do that. The, steak, the hamburger steak and the mashed potatoes together are a meal within itself but you can consider adding a green vegetable if you like green beans broccoli zucchini spinach whatever you'd like to add to this plate to dress it up a little more and a little more nutritional value because there's a lot of butter and gravy and goodness going on here i'm sorry i had to show it to you one last time before i dig in so i hope you consider making this recipe because I'm sure you will enjoy it. If there's anything that you think I should add or take out, um, please let me know in the comments below. 
Um, there's other ways that you can spruce up a gravy. You can add a little thyme, a little rosemary, different flavor profiles. But today I just want to show you a quick and easy way to make hamburger steak at home. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for joining me. I feel like I'm going on and on and on and on and on. But you know how I do. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Please, please, please continue to practice your social distancing. I feel like I keep repeating that, but it's because it's so important imperative that we do that so i want to keep encouraging you to do so keep tuning in to me and sharing my videos because you know i don't i don't really want you to be stingy i really want you to share these videos so we can create this beautiful loving cycle of sharing quick tips and recipes with one another so you can do that by sharing my youtube videos my instagram page as well i'll add that below also subscribe Turn on notifications, click the like button, have to make sure I don't miss anything. Thank you for joining me once again today. Stay safe. Thank you again, Ebony, for my nails. You have a great night.